Any questions about last session? Any questions in general? I have one about robustness in general. Sure. Um, so, so far in this class, we've been figuring out methods of generating these adversarial examples, and then we've been adding them to the training uh, and then retraining the network. So I guess my, my question stems from wondering how effective that is in terms of increasing robustness. So let's say, for example, we have a, a network and it was trained with no adversarial examples, and it is a very good network in terms of how it predicts the non-adversarial testing data. And let's say we go through the process of finding mum LP norm perturbations for all the training images such that they are now adversarial. And so we have a set of new training images that are adversarial and we sort of redo the whole process of training the network. And let's say that the network is again very good after this retraining and now all the adversarial examples that we put into the network are uh, no longer misclassified. So we can, I guess, repeat this process over and over again. So we can continuously find um, these minimum LP norm perturbations after we retrain, and we can constantly find um, these new sets of adversarial images. So my question is, how do these LP norm perturbations evolve over time? So for instance, if we go through this process once, and for one image, the minimum LP norm perturbation is, is 1.04 or something, and then we do it again, and maybe it's 2.07. How does that, how do those perturbations change over time? So that's, a, that's actually a very good question. And I'm going to answer your question in uh, two slides from now, because there we are going to try to approach this in a more systematic fashion and try to formulate it uh, in a better way so that you know exactly how effective augmenting your training data with adversarial examples is going to end up being. And that, that has a field of its own that's called robust optimization. So I'm going to be able to answer your question then, uh, but I'm not going to forget your question. It's an important one. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Any other ones? Okay, perfect. Just a quick recap of where we ended up last session. Uh, prior to this work, we have been assuming that you have access to the parameters of your neural network, the structure, and sometimes the training data that is used to train your architecture that you want to attack. This is uh, an extension on that. And the idea is that you don't even need to treat your attacks in a white box manner. You can assume that you don't know your architecture, you don't know the parameters that you want to attack, and you don't have even enough training data. And still, you can attack your neural network. And how does it work? You start with a small data set, maybe 100 images, or perhaps you can afford collecting 1,000 images. At the same time, you end up with your own architecture. And it doesn't really matter what architecture you have. It could be totally different from the architecture that you want to attack. And then you keep augmenting as zero. How? These are a bunch of images. You ask your Oracle to actually label these data for you. As soon as you have the labels, you can train your S0, you can train on that data, train your neural network F on S0 using the labels that are coming out of the Oracle, then compute the Jacobian and try to augment your data. You're gonna add to S0 a bunch of new data. They don't necessarily are gonna look like images. If you plot them, they are perhaps not gonna be meaningful, but they are going to have the same class as what your Oracle is thinking about. So you're going to create more images of dogs, more images of cats, but these images don't necessarily look like cats or dogs. These are synthetic data. And then you keep repeating this process. By the end of this process, after a couple of iterations, you're going to have a neural network that is fully trained. Now you can attack it. You can attack it using the techniques that, that we covered in the previous couple of sessions, like fast gradient sign method or the adversarial saliency map from the previous paper. Not only you can attack F, the images that are perturbed are gonna be effective in attacking your Oracle as well. And your Oracle was a black box to you. Any questions about this? Okay, perfect. 